Green Lantern issue 3 sees Hal Jordan falling from the skies, wondering how the hell he lost his ring power. As the ground quickly approaches, he thinks maybe he just needs to jumpstart it, focusing his willpower into the ring. The ring lights up and Hal's powers return, saving him from the fall. He finds he's in Africa, taking a moment to assess his situation and learn what type of ring this exactly is, finding it doesn't have an AI to translate different alien languages and powers off when he tries to head into space. He begins to test the ring, making a construct of an antelope from a nearby herd, finding he can also make it not just green but other colours too, just like he could do with his first ring he got from Alban Sir. As a cheetah begins to stalk the construct, he reflects the light off of it in a different way, making it to appear huge, scaring the cheetah off. Hal decides it's time to stop messing around, leaving the African plains as in present day Coast City, Sinestro smashes his way into an office building, confronting the company's CEO and his assistant. Sinestro is well aware that they are both wearing alien camouflage and he should just get rid of it. The man and his assistant do so, revealing themselves to be lizard people. They attack but Sinestro just smacks them out of the way, telling them that he hasn't come to fight but rather ask them for some assistance. The lizard says that his guild isn't in the habit of helping anyone, let alone someone who comes and attacks their own members. Sinestro reveals a hologram of the Legion of Doom, telling him that they will reward him handsomely for helping Sinestro. The lizard doesn't buy it, knowing that Lex Luthor is in jail and the other members are all scattered, so it's going to take more than a hollow bribe to get him to do anything. Sinestro has another offer, threatening to let the heroes of the Earth know what they are up to, and they will stop them, but that will be better than what the guild overlords will do to them when they are discovered. With no choice, the lizards ask what Sinestro needs, learning that he needs some willing people. Later at Ferris Aircraft, an alien breaches the airfield field security, opening the shipping container it trucked into the base to reveal Sinestro and several other thugs. More security guards soon arrive and Sinestro tells the aliens to keep them busy as he alone enters a hangar, where Ferris Air's new AI fighters are parked. The next day, Green Lantern plays baseball with some children, acting as their pitcher. He throws the ball and the kid cracks it with the bat, sending it high into the sky. From the bleachers, Kilowog tells the boy that he needs to run and the boy does, getting a home run. As the kids celebrate, Hal gets a message from Carol, who wants to talk. He wonders if this is a good or bad thing, thinking that good would be her giving him another chance and ditching Nathan. However, he knows that the bad option is all bad without Carol. Hal heads to Ferris Air, discreetly changing behind some shipping containers before learning from his co-pilot that Carol wants them wheels up ASAP. Carol appears at the head of the jet, demanding to speak with Hal alone. Hal's co-pilot goes to get the plane started as Carol asks what is going on, but Hal has no idea what she is talking about instead wondering where Nathan is. Carol says that he's finishing up their deal with the Pentagon, making Hal happy that they got their contract, thinking that they should celebrate by going to that beach they spent that one Labor Day on. Carol isn't interested, demanding to know what is happening. Later as the jet takes off, Carol reveals that Ferris Air had a break in the night before and she has security footage of it. Hal still doesn't understand what this has to do with him, but is shocked to see Sinestro was the one who broke in. Carol knows that Hal showing up, then Sinestro bombing her hangars is not a coincidence and he killed three of her employees and injured dozens of others, yet nothing was stolen or taken. Hal promises to find him, but Carol believes that's exactly what Sinestro wants, and this is him calling Hal out, letting him know that he knows where Hal works and lives. Sometime later, Hal gets a coffee at an empty diner, thinking about Sinestro and what happened on Karuga. He vows to find him and stop him, but is pulled from his mind by Sinestro, who knows that Hal has been looking for him. In another universe, Lantern Shepard and John Stewart battle the forces of the Revenant Queen. Shepard remembers how when he was a child, he wanted nothing more than to be like John Stewart, a guardian of the Green Lantern Corps. He finds the legends of the man all seemingly true and he wields no ring since he is the ring and he reconstructs his own flesh, making him indestructible. John blows through the horde of undead monsters, launching himself at the Revenant Queen, who remembers his words long ago and that she'll never forgive his betrayal. John figures that the one nice thing about being dead is that 
that you don't have to do anything. He readies his spear for a killing blow against the queen, but the queen tells him that she knows that she won't die today, and while her children won't devour this earth, there is more out there that the Radiant Dead will claim. The queen activates her ring and disappears into a portal, shocking John. Shepard is confused since the queen spoke as if she knew him, but that's impossible. John disregards the question, telling him that the villain escaped into the multiverse. Shepard doesn't know how they're going to find her now, but John reveals they can follow the trail of her old ring, confusing the rookie lantern even more. John commends the young lantern, telling him that Earth lived because of his actions and he shall be the foundation of a new lantern core, since while John rebuilds the core, Shepard will go on his first mission to find the Revenant Queen. John explains that he will need to find the next universe's John Stewart, since the Queen will hunt him down for certain. Back on Earth Zero, John sits with a construct of Guy Gardner, who finds his yard to be quite nice. John says his mother did most of the work, and he only put up the shed. Guy is surprised that he's staying with this, knowing that his mother had a real scare, but he wonders how long he's staying on Earth for. John, however, asks how many people did Guy serve with, those who had done it for so long who weren't fit for anything else. He tells Guy that that's him, and the other day his mother mentioned how whenever they go outside, he's always looking to the sky, and she's right, and while she is going through end of life stuff, she is right about that, and while he's doing his best, this is different from the stuff he usually has to deal with. John wishes that he was up there dealing with his problems that he can shoot at, and his mother sees that as plain as day, but he needs to keep his eyes in front of him. Guy thinks that it's going to be hard to replace him, but John knows that if there's one thing he's learned as a lantern all these years, it's that no one is irreplaceable, and there is nothing out there that they can't handle without him. As the friends talk the day away, the Revenant Queen's ring arrives in orbit, shining with the symbol of the Star Sapphire Core. 